<coughs> Hello friends, welcome you all to the 20th session of ARM based development. So, in this lecture, starting from now, we will be looking at things which are outside the processor. Okay, so um, today we will be starting with coprocessor. Okay. Then I will give you know some introduction about floating point format, then followed by a vector for floating point processor. So, up to this point, the number of units that we have covered so far talked about what is inside the ARM processor core. Okay, so just to give you a flavor of this. One second, sorry. Okay, so let me tell you what we have seen so far. This is ARM um, core. So we talked about. No, we are talking about a system with the ARM based processor. ARM based processor. Okay, so in in the SOC the system on a chip what we are seeing is what happens inside ARM core how does it execute in different instructions and how does it talk to different you know, kind of memory how it reads the instruction from there and how it writes back. So it, it was maximum maybe the instructions related to some memory in connections and then whatever is being executed inside the core. Now onwards we are going to look around the ARM core ok, having completed the instruction set including the thumb state and ARM state and then handling of in prep where you know peripherals were connected and then we have touched upon how ARM processor handles the interrupts. Now we are looking at the processors or cores which are outside the ARM, one is core processor ok. So the naming itself means that it is a subset or not even a subset it is a add on to the ARM processor ok that is why it is called coprocessor it is not a main processor but it is an add on to ARM. So it is also inside the SOC ok where ARM core is inside and then memory maybe some cache or whatever and then there are some buses which we will be talking about you know ARM specific buses which connect the different peripherals and then coprocessor. Now our interest is going to be if suppose we want to expand the functionality of ARM core beyond what it supports. So you know that ARM supports two's complement integers right, so both signed and unsigned. Now what if, what if it is for the ARM SOC that you are using it and the application is for some scientific application and where you will be using a floating point operation ok, floating point you know I will be talking about this uh, floating point arithmetic as well as the format. So in case if we want to expand the functionality of ARM we could do it by adding those features into the ARM core or it could be done by adding that specific application specific features into some other co processor which runs along with the ARM core ok. So you may wonder why are we doing it you know because in a design in a system design we may not need a co processor always we might be happy with only having an ARM core along with the peripherals and the memory. So if suppose the coprocessor is also built into the ARM core all the functionalities of coprocessor like floating point support then it will be unnecessarily increasing the size and power consumption and complexity of the chip in terms of area in terms of power consumption. So we do not want 
a functionality into the inside the processor where it is not required. So that is the reason why a special functions like a DSP digital signal processing or a specific floating point processing or network processors it could be any of the specialized functions which are very specific to some applications where this ARM based system is going to be used for ok. In that case we can the user as a system as a user the system designers may decide to have coprocessors which are specific to those functionalities and then add it with the ARM core. So, it effectively it is a, you know enhances the functionality of the ARM at the same time preserves the simplicity of a single core ok. So, that is the intent of going in for core processor. So, we in this lecture we will talk about ARM core processor interface ok and then in the next lecture I will talk about the instructions which are related to core processor. Then I will explain you about floating point format followed by a lecture giving inside what is inside a vector floating point processor. So, typically we start with how a coprocessor is interfaced with the ARM and then what are the instructions supported by ARM then how it is implemented to support a floating point arithmetic operations ok. So, this will give you a complete picture of what is a coprocessor all about and what is the use of them and how is it implemented in the ARM processor ok along with ARM processor. ok now let us see uh, let me take the pen back. So, these are the topics which are going to be covered today why we need coprocessor and then how ARM and coprocessors are connected to each other what are their interface and what are their signals they exchange between them and then we will touch upon pipelining in the ARM and then how does it connect you know how is it connected to the coprocessor and whether does it have a pipeline and uh, those details will be covered today ok. I told you about why we need coprocessor, so it is to enhance a functionality. So, additional instructions specialized additional instructions can be added using coprocessors to extend the functionality ok. It could be DSP or a floating point operations. Now, when I say we are adding more instructions you know that ARM has a 32 bit wide instruction set right. So, we are not the how many instruction could be there uh, using those 32 bit power combinations that could be a 2 power 32 instructions, but does ARM have that many instructions it does not. So, it has some set of instructions I, I, I do not top of the mind I do not recall how many instructions are supported in 7 maybe 30 40 instructions because there are so many varieties to that because conditional stacks may be different and then uh, you know you will have a different you know whether it, it could be with the X option or without the X option. So, there are multiple uh, combinations are possible, but even if you support all of them it will not you know be at the anywhere close to the number of options we have with it to 32 bit wide instructions. So, the instruction formats which are not used by ARM ok. So, you know that ARM op code and then we have talked about you know every instruction how they are dividing this particular ARM 32 bit instruction into multiple fields and how it is used. So, we know those things inside. So, the combinations which are not supported which are not used by ARM ok they are going to be the gaps in the instructions of ARM are going to be used by the coprocessor instructions ok. So, the bit combinations of coprocessor instructions will be different from what is currently or what is which is being supported by ARM ok in the in, in supporting the ARM instructions. So, the coprocessor instructions will be a different combination of bit patterns ok. Now, this is what we are going to be using for supporting different functionalities. So, in this talk we are not going to talk about how is it inside a coprocessor instruction only thing what you should remember is that 
this coprocessor instruction combination is different from what ARM has already reserved it for, for its own instructions. Okay, that is enough. And then we will see how it is supported in terms of connecting a coprocessor with the ARM and what are the other signals which are getting you know exchanged between ARM core and the coprocessor. Then we will talk about what are the instructions which are supported in coprocessors and then how different coprocessors can use them to support their functionalities okay different functionalities. So one thing we have to remember the coprocessor instructions are also 32 bit wide okay that is what I am saying. So then you may wonder is there a thumb state for a coprocessor right because we know that ARM core has its own thumb state that means it has got a 16 bit wide instruction set format right. So which is different okay if it is a ARM is in the thumb state then it will be executing 16 bit instructions but does it does the coprocessor also have thumb state it does not okay. So if ARM processor is in thumb state okay suppose then we cannot have any coprocessor instruction being used okay. So one thing good what you should remember is the coprocessor instructions are all 32 bit wide. So only when ARM is in not in thumb state and it is in ARM state then a coprocessor instruction can be there. Now I will give you an uh, example okay suppose you have the like, no typical add add s yes instruction okay r1 comma r2 comma r3 is this a coprocessor instruction or is it a tip normal arm instruction it is a normal arm instruction and this is a 32 bit wide instruction because there are three operands in it okay and we mention also about s yes option so that means this is a 32 bit instruction okay assume it is in some location in memory and then we give another format okay maybe f add okay floating point add assume you know it could be different for different power processor. So f add some registers okay it could be rf1 okay floating point okay registers rf2 you now I am just giving you some syntax because the, this syntax is not specific to a particular processor it could be different. So and then followed by maybe a subtract r1 comma r2. So you are writing an assembly program like this okay. Now every instruction is going to take 4 bytes length so if this is starting at 100 address 100 this instruction will be at 104 and this will be at 108. Now this whatever instruction okay that I have written here is something specific to a coprocessor may be a floating point okay uh, the format may be you know you need to a particular processor so we are not bothered about that but it is nothing to do with the ARM instruction. Okay friends uh, there was a technical issue so hopefully you should be able to see this um, what I have written. I am explaining you how does a coprocessor instruction okay gets embedded into a, a typical ARM core ARM instructions. So when we have a coprocessor support in the system okay we have an SOC okay ARM core is there assume that ARM core is there and then there is one coprocessor which is a maybe a floating point coprocessor which also is there in the SOC okay. Now you can write code by embedding the floating point instruction in between the ARM instructions. So and they are all 32 bit wide both ARM instructions as well as the floating point instructions which happens to be a coprocessor instruction. So they all come through the same instruction pipeline and they get into the pipeline of the ARM core as well as a coprocessor in our case it is a floating point processor which is always looking at the data bus okay and then it is in sync with the ARM core and then it is also getting this instruction. So 
when this instruction the when the palm processor decodes this it will realize that okay i have got a floating point operation which is not what i could execute if there is a coprocessor which supports this particular instruction then it might pick the instruction to execute so when this particular instruction comes into the execute stage it looks for a coprocessor whether is it ready to take this instruction or not if there is a coprocessor suppose there is a floating point coprocessor which has all as it is also reading all the instructions which are read by the arm core so it will know that i have a instruction for my so it will start executing it so it will execute it only when that particular instruction reaches the execute stage of the arm processor so there are two pipelines one is inside the floating point processor and arm anyway it has a pipeline so these instructions flow through all these instructions okay all these instruction flow through both the pipelines and then if the particular coprocessor instruction what arm encounters is also sub, is supported by a coprocessor which is in the system then that floating point processor or coprocessor picks up that instruction and starts executing it and informs the arm that okay i'll take care of that so this is the kind of a handshake which we'll be covering now okay just want to give you a overview where the whole thing is working so arm instructions are all there and then in between the floating point instructions are instructions are embedded into them so they also occupy a 32 bit wide instruction but they are different format than what typical arm instructions follow so arm processor knows that okay it is not my instruction so it will look for anybody who any takers in the system so that could be a floating point core processor and there could be a dsp another dsp processor okay so you may have an instruction from a floating point operation and then maybe a filter operation okay filter some register name so this instruction also can be there so this will be picked up by the floating point processor and then a filter instruction may be picked up by the dsp processor so now you may wonder how the, so the instruction fetching and you know uh, decoding is happening on instruction fetching is done by the arm core whereas what is being fetched is all looked by the other cores also other core processors which are looking into the database they also keep their pipeline they also have a pipeline similar to arm core three stage pipeline and they keep filling the instructions what they see while the processor arm is accessing the instructions from the memory so typically core processors also run at the same main clock as that of arm core and they are in sync with the arm's pipeline have this background okay so this will help you to understand the rest of the topic okay okay let us go into the details I'm sorry One second. Okay, friends. Let us carry forward. There are separate processing units that are tightly coupled to ARM processor. Okay. it could be a dsp processor or it could be a floating point operation processor or a network processor it could be anything so typical what does a coprocessor contain it contains an instruction pipeline which is following the arm pipeline okay it follows the arm pipeline in lockstep that means every clock the pipeline in the coprocessor also does the same thing that arm core does so arm might execute its own instruction okay it has to of course of course then what does the coprocessor do with the arm instruction it ignores that 
similarly when arm encounters a coprocessor in section it knows that okay it is not for it cannot be executed by arm itself so when that particular coprocessor in section reaches the execution execute stage then it controls no it asks for any coprocessor who is willing to take that instruction then it will allow that instruction to be executed by the coprocessor so and arm ignores that so typically the instruction pipeline is there are one in arm and then there will be instruction pipeline in each of the coprocessors and they all go in block step okay so the coprocessor has its own instruction decoding logic so it can understand its own instruction but it will not understand the arm processor instruction so it will know that okay it is a arm instruction so it will ignore it okay that much of knowledge it will have and then it has a handshake logic to communicate with the arm so what i mean by handshake logic some set of signals okay i will tell you what are the signals that it uses to talk to the arm core and then the coprocessor also has a set of register bank it has got its own registers inside okay and a special processing logic with its own data path so you, we have seen arms data path right how instruction come through you know goes through what all the stages it goes through and how the registers are accessed how many register ports all those things we saw in the data path of arm so similar to that there is a separate data path inside the coprocessor so that also that only can use the coprocessor instructions to work with its own registers and that's the separate job which is scientific operation mostly okay so this set of things gives you a flavor of how a coprocessor behaves so coprocessor is an add on it sits outside the arm core in that in the sense in the soc arm will be there and then coprocessor will be there and then i will tell you how they are connected to each other okay and then we will see that they the coprocessors have the zone instruction pipeline and its zone decoding logic and they talk to the arm core using some signal and arm also looks at those signals and then the coprocessor has its own register bank and its own data path okay this you should have in the back of the mind then only you will be able to appreciate how does the coprocessor work okay i will give you more and more no when we go into the details of the signals and how they talk to each other you will understand how these things all you no know, come together to make this coprocessor function properly so a coprocessor is connected to the same data and control buses of arm okay please remember it is connected to the data and control buses and not to the address bus okay that is very very important address bus is not connected to the coprocessor why the address generation okay and instruction fetching is handled by whom it is done by arm okay so instruction fetching is done by arm but while the arm is arm is fetching the instruction it is also read by coprocessors okay so arm issues the read memory read to read the instruction okay from memory so this is address bus and then there is a data bus okay which is also connected to the coprocessors so and then the control signal is also there there is a control signal between them arm and coprocessor so the coprocessor is continuously monitoring the transaction happening on the bus and then it knows where the instructions are getting when the instructions are getting fetched and it takes that instructions also into it so it will go through its own pipeline why the same instruction is going through the arms pipeline okay now at some particular point that is there is a decode stage both the arm as well as the coprocessor they realize that a particular instruction has come which is meant for this guy and it is not for arm then when that particular instruction reaches the execute stage coprocessor takes on the control of executing that instruction and arm ignores it as soon as it knows that coprocessor informs that i am going to take this instruction you don't worry about it then 
Coprocessor executes it and ARM ignores that. Then you may wonder what does it do? It will go with the next instruction, okay? It will keep so it will ignore, okay? This instruction is a special instruction, it does not ARM does not even know whether it is going to take 2 cycles or 10 cycles or 50 cycles, it does not know. So, it is totally implemented by the coprocessor. So, it could be in some internal, you know, uh, e power x operation which may take a longer time. So, ARM will carry on with its own job. So, the coprocessor will form, you know, perform the e power x operation and then store it in its own internal register. So, that is what happened. So, I am telling this background again and again because you have to remember this to understand how the instructions get exchanged between them. So, it is coprocessor is connected to both, coprocessor tracks the pipeline of the ARM processor ok. This means that the coprocessor also decodes the ARM instructions in the instruction stream. So, coprocessor also should know whether it is the instruction is meant for its own execution or it is for ARM or for some other coprocessor see coprocessor is only entity there, there may be another set of some few coprocessors in the system. So, but what particular coprocessor will look for its own instruction and then you may wonder how does it know which instruction belongs to itself, I will tell you that ok that is there will be a coprocessor ID which will indicate to the coprocessor that it belongs to it. So, it executes those that coprocessor supports ignores the instructions that are meant for ARM processor or other coprocessor ok. So, it will just ignore and then carry on with the pipelining you know similar to what ARM does. Each instruction progresses down both the ARM and coprocessor pipeline at the same time, please remember they are at the same clock, the M clock which is the main clock which is connected to both the coprocessor as well as ARM. So, they run together and the instructions go through the different stages of the pipeline together. Okay, but physically they are in a different places, they are in fact you know they are running in parallel, they are having a different hardware and they all look at the same instruction and they execute it together ok. If a particular instruction belongs to coprocessor it will execute otherwise it will ignore it. So, the execution of instruction is shared between the core and the coprocessor. So, execution of instructions that means what ARM instructions are executed by ARM core and if any coprocessor instruction come that will be executed by the coprocessor. So, they are actually running in parallel, they are in parallel, they, they are in sync that means each when a particular instruction is in fetch mode in ARM core the same will be in this fetch stage of the coprocessor, the same instruction ok. So, this is the basic fundamental of how a coprocessor is connected to ARM core and how they function, good I hope this is clear to you. Now, I will introduce you to the different signals and interfaces which will make sense now. So, this is the diagram, see there are n number of coprocessors ok, but maximum is 16 ok ARM 7 supports 16 coprocessors. So, but I have given you a sample where you know, a number of processors are there, ARM core is here and coprocessors are there, they are all inside one SOC please remember that ok, they are not in a outside the chip or something, they are all in the same SOC where the ARM core is ok and there are control signals which are connected to both ARM as well as to the coprocessors, which are the control signals I will explain in the next slide, but, but control signals are connected to both of them and the data bus is also connected to both the processors ok. So, ARM is also reading an instruction and the same time the same instruction will go into the all the coprocessors ok. Please remember if there are three right now let us assume that there are three coprocessors we will call this as a three coprocessor three then when an instruction is fetched it is going into ARM core as well as to all the coprocessors and if it happens to be a coprocessor instruction it may ok 
copressor any instruction is 32 bit here and there is a copressor id okay assume that this is the field copressor id cpid i call them if it happens to be a 3 one instruction with a cpid 3 comes now this guy will pick the instruction and arm will ignore it and other cores will ignore that and it will execute it now next immediately after that there is another 32 bit instruction but it happens to be a coprocessor instruction but with the cpid of 2 then this processor will take it the other coprocessors and arm core will ignore it so that's the way the instructions get into the processors and they talk to each other now how does arm know a particular instruction is taken over by a particular coprocessor or not these are the signals okay let me explain these signals now uh, no, in detail I will okay see here this is the NCPI okay that is the arm core has recognized that a particular instruction that it has seen is a coprocessor instruction it is not an arm instruction then it will make this signal low okay because the NCPI so coprocessor instruction. So, it will send it to all the processors all the coprocessors are reading the CPI NCPI line. So, they will all come to know that hey there is one instruction which the ARM core has recognized that it will be a coprocessor instruction. Now, when will this signal be generated only when yes, this coprocessor instruction has reached the execute stage see you remember a coprocessor instruction will first come into this fetch stage and then during the decode stage when the coprocessor instruction moves into the decode stage the arm core recognizes that oh it is a coprocessor instruction it is not my instruction. So, and then if it happens to enter the execute stage why do I say if it happens to execute there are some possibility that the coprocessor may never come to the execute stage because the previous stage was a jump instruction branch instruction then this branch would have taken the control to some other instruction and the leaving this coprocessor instruction at the decode stage itself it is not executed. So, the decision of a particular decode in a particular coprocessor instruction is getting executed is actually in the hands of the code which is being executed by the arm. So, if it has executed a branch instruction just prior to the coprocessor instruction the control would have gone somewhere else and the coprocessor instruction would not have entered the execute stage in that case the NCPA will not happen ok. Then these coprocessors which are suppose the coprocessor instruction ID was 2 and this would have picked it up, but now it sees that NCPA is not becoming a low that means the arm has decided to ignore uh, no decided not to execute not to be executed by any of the coprocessor also because arm may not execute it and it will not ask others also to execute if the control takes it somewhere you may wonder why is it implemented this way see you might have written a code if ok i is equal to ok some integer equal to 1 then you do a floating point add ok f add ok. If it is not equal to 1 you will continue with some other instruction arm instruction or whatever it is you do not want this f add to be done. So, we are mixing the floating point instruction along with the normal control arm instruction. So, in that case you should not allow the coprocessor also to execute this instruction. So, that is the reason the processor decides that this instruction is not to be executed and it will not raise this NCPA signal then what happens the coprocessor ignores it even though it belongs to its own it will ignore it ok. So, remember this logic. NCPI is generated when that particular signal you know reaches the execute state and one more possibility is that ok you are adding F pad you want to do a F pad EQ suppose that means what if you have a 0 flag in the arm core equal to 0 I am sorry equal means it is equal to 1 then we want this instruction to be executed otherwise we do not want. So, that arm core decides when whether to execute a particular instruction or not including the floating point. So, that is control is with arm. So, that is why main control processor is arm they are all co processor they will do the job that arm expects them to do 
but they know how to do the job okay arm doesn't know but arm controls what this coccyx should know should do and when they should do so that is controlled by the ncpi signal okay now okay it will on suppose you assume an instruction a coccyx instruction has come into the arm core and it has to be executed it has reached the execute state of the pipeline very good now arm cannot do anything with the coccyx instruction only it can do is it can inform the other coprocessors in the system please remember arm doesn't even know the existence of this coprocessors okay there is no way of arm knowing it it just looks at the instruction and says that okay it is not for me it just informs the it raises a signal and then see waits for anybody taking this instruction or not now how does it know there are two signals for it okay what is that coprocessor a means coprocessor absent signal and coprocessor dc signal i will explain this here itself because the picture is there and you know you will uh, you will be able to understand the whole flow of it then we will go through the slides to understand the exact sequence okay now after this ncpi is given it is waiting for this two inputs okay to come from any of the takers if they are present in the system now if the cpi id of the coprocessor matches with one of the ids then they that processor suppose you assume that uh, instruction which is being executed which has come to the execute stage has a cpi id 1 okay in that case what happens this guy will pick up the coprocessor one will pick it up assume that the coprocessor is not received with the previous instruction okay it is first time it is encountering a is one instruction now it will say that i am not busy that means what they will make this this will be zero okay this signal will be zero because it is not busy now and then is it absent no it is actually present so it will make this as zero both of them it will make it zero whereas other coprocessor may decide not to even drive this signal okay or even if it drives what happen it's an and gate so one of them driving it to zero will make this output as zero agree so once this processor has picked it up and others are saying that no i am not well no i am not the right person to use this so it will not say that you know i am interested in executing the instruction whereas only this processor will say that i am interested in executing but i can do it because the cpi id of this matches with mine that means what each coprocessor has its own id embedded into the processor okay it may be a some hardwired id so if this will have two in it it will have one in it and maybe we will assume that this is three so only when it encounters a coprocessor instruction with its own cpi id as matches with its own id 1 or 0 1 or 2 or whatever so it will pick up and then based on that it will drive the signal and i am not busy now okay and then i am not absent i am present that means it will write as zero there then arm core knows that okay i said that there's a coprocessor instruction i encountered in the execute stage and uh, any of you are willing to take it and i am getting a signal back from one of the coprocessors that they are you know it is ready to execute it please remember these coprocessors cannot have a common id they need to be unique otherwise two people will say that i am taking it okay that will be a confusion so as a system designer arm along with arm when they are putting the coprocessor inside the system they have to make sure that the each of the arm the, the coprocessors have a unique id and then and if the matching instruction come on the line they will pick it up and then they will inform the arm core now the question is arm what does it do once the instruction is fetched or accepted by the coprocessor it will not wait for that to be executed okay because it is if it suppose if it waits for that what is the advantage of having a coprocessor it doesn't make sense at all right suppose i am i am asking for a coprocessor to be there in the system to speed up the whole functions right i want to arm processor not to be blocked by any floating point operations or any dsp operation or network processor operation but if the arm core is also waiting for them to complete then they are not adding any value there 
doesn't make sense at all for arm core to wait for this execution to be completed so as soon as one of the processor coprocessors say that i am interested in taking it up and then informs the processor arm core back then arm moves that instruction out of the execute state okay that coprocessor instruction moves out of the execute state and the next decode instruction comes into the execute state so once the instruction is handed over to somebody it goes on the arm core does just goes on with its own job it doesn't care about what has what the coprocessor does with it then you may wonder how can i tie up these two because these are a common application we'll talk about that later okay at this moment remember once the coprocessor instruction is picked up by somebody arm core carry on carries on with its own job that means it will take the next instruction and if it happens to be arm instruction it can execute right it is not tied to this instruction being executed because if suppose there is no link between these two for a moment then this instruction can carry on so what is the advantage you are getting here arm is executing its own instruction at the in parallel coprocessor is also executing its own instruction and you can have multiple coprocessor instructions in the sequence and all of them are loaded with all those instructions they are executing you can see that whole lot of thing happening at the same time coprocessor are doing its own job and arm is also doing its own job that is the advantage of having a coprocessor so unless this option is there you won't get the benefit of it but you may wonder why is that control of you know fetching the instruction and then handing over to coprocessor are given to arm because there should be one master okay one master and multiple slaves a stable system should have one master and multiple slave there can't be multiple masters so arm is the master here so the control of fetching the instruction from the memory is with this core whereas executing a particular specialized instructions are the knowledge of that and then a special functions are built into this core processor and they do the job okay so you can understand this now i hope see one arm instruction followed by a core processor one instruction followed by core processor two instruction okay and then another arm instruction and followed by a cp3 instruction then arm instruction what happens now at this moment okay this is going on this is going on this is also going on and arm is ahead with the another instruction which is in the execute stage now now you can see that four instructions are getting executed simultaneously understand that so that is what is happening here okay good i hope this is clear to you so this is how the signals are sent back to it now we'll give the details of busy and why are we having this busy signal we'll see that before that i will explain you other control signals which are connected to the coprocessor m clock which is the main clock and m n wait is what this is to delay the clock suppose there is a slow peripheral or memory we want to delay it and reset please reset is not only going to arm core okay it also goes to coprocessors because coprocessor is executing something in along with arm if reset is given to only arm and not to cp then it, the coprocessor will not know that there is a reset given so this reset signal has to be given to all of them okay then okay so reset is given uh, it means it is uh, the coprocessor also looks at the reset signal now what are these signals let us see one by one so the signals used to interface the arm with the coprocessor are grouped into four categories now what are these two signal we have seen it earlier memory request and sequential so if you recall we have seen about four different cycles where arm core can be in what are they non sequential cycle sequential cycle internal cycle and coprocessor cycle so whenever arm encounters a coprocessor instruction it is in a coprocessor cycle if it is executing a coprocessor instruction it is in coprocessor cycle otherwise it is a sequential or non sequential memory access or it is something it is doing internally doing some register transfer or something so 
the co-processor also should see all these cycles ok and then what is this, this we will talk about it later ok, but at least know that there is a this signal indi indicates that if it is a low it is a user mode otherwise it is a privilege mode. So, a co-processor may be programmed to execute some instruction only when the arm is in a privileged mode ok, it may ignore the instruction if it is given by the user mode ok, there is a possibility you can build a system like that. In that case the CP2 has a signal N trans if it is not in privilege mode it may ignore the instruction ok, there are some control ok for control purposes ok, what is N OPC it is a op code. So, is a N means is a low low signal is active low active ok. So, code fetch is low when the signal is low it is the C Oh, I'll tell you one. Arm core is there. Arm. This is arm. This is CP one. Co-processor one. I told you that the data bus is connected to both of them. Now inside the data bus, what is going on? Okay, it is the address bus. This is memory. Okay, uh, memory is connected to. Okay. Now what is going on in the data bus could be instruction or a data. So as a co-processor, it should know whether it is. What is going on in the database is a instruction or a data. So, op code is going being read by the ARM core or it is some memory cycle, ARM may be doing some LDM or LDR, it may be executing its own memory addresses. So, to know that it will look into the N OPC signal and then find out that ok, if it is low, that means an instruction is getting you know gets fetched. So, I should you know take that instruction into the pipeline the scope processor will know that ok it has to fetch the instruction into the pipeline. So, that is why this signal is also important for the process co processors to look at. Now, what is T bit? T bit will be low when it is arm is in thumb state. So, what is the difference between arm state and thumb state the 16 bit instruction or 32 bit instruction. So, if the arm is in thumb state it is fetching a 16 bit instruction from the memory. So, Whereas coprocessor instructions are always 32 bit. So, when 16 bit instructions are going on the database, coprocessors just ignore it, ok, because they cannot make any sense out of 16 bit instruction. As long as the ARM is in thumb state, ARM is not going to give any coprocessor instructions, ok. The NCPI signal will not be activated at all because coprocessor instruction are always 32 bit. So, it cannot appear along with the thumb state instruction. So, effectively if you are in a if you are writing a thumb state code you cannot embed the floating point instructions along with it, because you will be mixing 16 bit instruction with the 32 bit instruction which is not valid ok. So, that is why coprocessor instruction and coprocessor instruction can appear or can be embedded along with arm instruction, but not with the thumb instruction please remember this very important point ok, very good these signals I already explained to you and this is the data bus it could be one of them will be selected and uh, it will be there ok. Now, let us understand how the different signal combinations mean what, see when both of them the coprocessor absent ok, let me use some other color here to bring out the monotony ok, CPA CPB A means it is not available or something it is absent, co processor is absent is 0 means it is it is there present and CPB it is not busy ok, CP, CPB is 0 means the signal is 0 that means it is not busy that means co processor is present and not busy ok, that means it can take up this instruction and it can execute it ok, you can read this uh, thing I will not go through this. So, arm ignores the instruction co processor picks up the instruction. Now, what is this combination? Co processor is there, but it is busy what does it mean? It is busy with the previous instruction I will give you an example. Suppose arm instruction is there after that some f add is there floating point add and immediately you are giving a f multiply ok and then some arm instruction. Now, I told you any floating point operation may take more time more cycles. Now, if that is in the execute stage and your arm has handed over to 
the floating point processor because uh, you know it has set the 0 0 so it has it is now executing add now floating point add it is executing the uh, floating point processor now immediately followed by that is fml is coming now arm processor what it will do it will hand over this fml also to somebody right so it will say that hey any takers are there for this now there cannot be two floating point processor there can be only one because cp will be the same right so one coprocessor instruction or coprocessor will be there which is the floating point processor so it is already busy with the add instruction now it cannot take multi instruction until it completes this so what happens because it is busy with the fr fml cannot be taken which happens to be in the next instruction itself now what happens is because of that the arm pipeline stalls it stalls ok I will tell you why this is the arm pipeline ok this is the fetch this is decode and this is execute now there is a coprocessor ok floating point processor it has got a, a fetch decode and execute now add instruction is here mul also has been read by the coprocessor ok floating point coprocessor has already read the mul instruction but it cannot see typically this two instructions are to be handed over no handled by this processor only ok but it is already executing this in its own pipeline ok. So it cannot execute the, uh, this instruction now so we have this instruction has to wait now what happens here here first add came this f add is handed over to this guy now f mul was here right previously f mul was there now that is picked up by uh, now because add has come here f mul will come here now ok after that here some arm instruction is sitting there as you assume now f mul is to be taken over by the again same coprocessor but it cannot take it up because this is going on it may take maybe a 4 or 5 cycles or 6 cycles assume now until this instruction is taken over by this guy the pipeline stall stalls arm pipeline ok stalls you may wonder why should it stall now earlier for fr it, it does not stall it carry or carries forward whereas for fml it is waiting the reason being there is a coprocessor to take over this fml because cpa is 0 that means it is not absent no floating point coprocessor is present but cpb is 1 that means it is busy so that means the, there is a guy who can take care of this instruction, but there it is busy with this previous instruction. So now arm has to wait. If it doesn't wait, what will happen? This fml will go out of the pipeline, and then it cannot keep track of the flow. Okay, because I told you that arm is the master, and others are slaves. So the master has to take care, make sure that the control flow is properly maintained. Okay. But you may wonder why in FR it went ahead. It went ahead with FR because somebody has taken over the instruction and it does not want to wait for it. So, as uh, a typical programmer, if you are a smart programmer, ok, you should not put two instructions belonging to the same coprocessor one after the other, then you are unnecessarily stalling the pipeline of the ARM code. Suppose if there is something else that to be done by ARM before the FML has to be done, then those instructions can be put here in front of FML and then you can put FML later. Now, what happens during this gap while ARM is busy with its own instruction, FR also would have been done by the CP and it is now no longer busy when the FML comes into the flow, then FML will be taken over by coprocessor. So, that is the kind of mixing we have to do a floating point instructions and the arm instruction needs to be mixed properly. So, that you make use of the gaps in between for the arm code to go with the its own execution without waiting for the coprocessor to complete. So, it is left with it is it is left to the to the developer programmer to make use of this particular combination.
okay then only you will be using the uh, exit you know we taking the advantage of the coprocessor now why this is invalid it says okay coprocessor is of absent that means what no takers for this particular processor instruction coprocessor instruction but somebody in the coprocessor list says that i am not busy see it is a contradiction okay that means it says that i am it says that i cannot execute this instruction but i am not busy so it's a bad combination to happen suppose see there are two coprocessors okay cp1 and cp2 okay both of them saw the instruction which had a coprocessor id 3 okay assume that in the system only these two are there okay both of them say okay this is not for me so that means they wouldn't have driven the cpa to zero they it will maintain it as one only because it is not going to take up this instruction at all okay so as far as this instruction is concerned they are the coprocessor is not present in the system and they should also drive the cpb one to say that okay i am busy okay so it will not come <coughs> confuse the processor so this is not the kind of a valid response it cannot say i am not busy but i can't take this instruction so that's a bad combination so that's why i'm saying that this combination will not happen okay no coprocessor will see this signal is a and of multiple coprocessor giving so nobody should have made the particular signal zero in this combination if this happens to be one this also should be one now what happens this is a valid combination because no takers for this coprocessor instruction and all of them are no whether they are busy or not they say that no i cannot take this instruction at all now what does the processor do let us see okay let me use uh, blue color for a change or uh, maybe brown okay now arm core okay this is fetch decode execute it found out a, it found that there is a coprocessor instruction with a cp maybe cp id coprocessor id as 5 but in the system there are okay three coprocessors which are id 1 2 3 now as soon as it sees this arm core would have sent a n n cpa signal okay coprocessor instruction any takers for this it would have made this low okay now this guy also will say i cannot take it i can't take it because it's a coprocessor 5 instruction now what does the processor do that's a valid valid question to ask see it cannot stall the pipeline because there is no takers for this particular instruction if there is a taker that person would have said that i am busy now but i am present that means the cpa will be zero and cpb okay would have become one then it can it can wait because there is somebody who can recognize this instruction but it is currently busy so he may take it up later but when they say that uh, no it is busy as well as i am not the guy to recognize this instruction that means what no takers for this currently in the system then arm has to do its own job what it will do it will generate an undefined instruction exception okay you might uh, you heard about this undef instruction right exception it will go to that instruction exception and that handler needs to do the job of what to do with this instruction okay now you may wonder why are we supporting both see as a system designer i may decide to have a coprocessor in hardware or i may decide to do a simulation using it in software suppose the floating point operations can be done in software also so i may emulate the software in the emulate of software so in that case it has it should be executed in the handler okay so that instruction needs to be handled by some left untouched okay
So, hello. Okay. Hope you have understood this combination of various things. So, if a particular instruction is not recognized by any coprocessor, then ARM generates an undefined undefined instruction exception, and it is taken care of by the software. So, if we decide that I don't want to have a hardware coprocessor, and then I can handle it in software, that option is available. Okay. So, if no takers are there for a particular coprocessor instruction, that we can do undefined instruction trap and then execute whatever is supposed to be done by a coprocessor in software. So, only thing is, what do we uh, lose here? The parallelism because ARM is performing the job of handling the particular corpus in section. So, it is going to affect the performance and there is no hardware which is running parallelly along with ARM executing the corpus in section. So, it will be pretty slow, but the thing is we do not need a extra hardware we do not need that extra power and uh, you no know, area, but it is ok if we can handle it in software it can be done. So, a particular instruction if it is not picked up by the coprocessor, then ARM generates an exception to handle it ok very good. Now, let us see. So, the ARM process evaluates the type as well as the condition code and then decides whether to be executed or not by a coprocessor ok. I told you about E Q and N E and all those control signal if a particular coprocessor instruction is does not have to be executed because the condition code fails then it will not generate the signal that means the coprocessor also will ignore that uh, instruction. Now, I told you that ARM is connected to address bus not the coprocessors. So, coprocessors are not connected to the address bus. So, ARM only will generate the addresses required for the instruction fetch as well as if there are any instruction a floating point or in a coprocessor instruction needs a memory access that is also generated the address is generated by ARM. These coprocessors cannot generate any address because they are not even connected to the address bus. So, they cannot access the memory directly they have to go through the core only. So, ARM takes the undefined instruction track if no coprocessor accepts the instruction that means how does it know both CPA and CPB happens to be one that means there is no coprocessor which is present and there is nobody who, is who can take this instruction. So, that means it has to be handled by ARM only so it will generate a trap or that on undefined instruction. So, at the same time what does the coprocessor do it decodes all the instructions to determine whether it can accept the instruction or not it ignores if the instruction does not belong to it ok. That means what if an instruction is an ARM instruction it will ignore if the CPID does not match that means what this coprocessor instruction does not belong to it it may be for some other coprocessor. So, only one coprocessor whose ID matches with this ID in the instruction will say that I am taking up this instruction. So, otherwise it is ignored. So, that is the logic used. Now, indicates where it can accept the instruction by using ok the coprocessor indicates whether it can accept or not using CPA and CPB. When the instruction is in execute stage and the NCPA is made low by ARM please remember it should be in execute stage and this should have been low. If it is not low what does it mean? The ARM decided that condition code is failed that means what the F add EQ was the instruction and 0 flag in the ARM core is not equal to 1 that means this instruction should not be executed because EQ condition is not satisfied. So, please remember this condition code is maintained in ARM core not in the floating point process it may also maintain the core process also maintains the status and other things, but condition codes that are mentioned in the instructions are maintained in the or with respect to the CZNV flag in the ARM core ok. You may wonder why the CZNV of ARM is used because the the decision on whether to execute an instruction or not ok is with the ARM core he is the master ARM is the master. So, it can do only based on its own flag it cannot take a decision based on the flags in other coprocessor. So, the conditions are all to do with the something in the CZNV flags of the ARM processor ok. 
so that's how the design is because that is the only possible design is in in the in the scenario right so because one guy has to decide the control flow of the whole in whole program that is on core so copas of access any values required from its own register bank as mentioned by the instruction so once the copas of instruction is picked up by the processor then it will look at the op cores of so these op cores will be most probably for some of the operations to be done by the cp it will be its own registers because i told you that arm the core processor also has its own register set so the op, op code uh, operands may be from those register files so you know here f add suppose it mentions that okay you do a perform a floating point arithmetic using those registers inside the processor maybe you call it as f1 and f2 these registers and then put the result in f3 then it can add the values in f1 and f2 and then put the value in f3 which is inside the cp okay inside the core processor so the instructions may fetch the operands within the core processor registers and perform the operation required by the instruction good okay what happens to unaccepted instruction if a core processor cannot execute an instruction there is that is no core processor in the system responds with an acceptance of the instruction arm generation and define instruction i told you this. programmer can choose whether to emulate the core processor function in software by writing undefined instruction exception i told you this also since a dedicated hardware core processor is not integrated with the arm core to handle the instruction okay if it is not there hardware is not there then it has to be done by the software you can't have you can't say i will put a core processor instruction in the you no know, instruction stream but i won't handle it i won't i you know the system doesn't have a hardware then what happens to that instruction arm cannot do anything with that and then there is no core processor also who can is executed then what will happen your program will fail so we cannot have that condition at all so if suppose you know that there is no core processor which can take that instruction we have to support that core processor instruction by writing a exception handler properly undefined instruction exception properly to handle that instruction so okay what is core processor id up to 16 core processor can be referenced by a system with a unique core processor id number to identify it please remember in a system in a soc in a system arm is there and then there are cp 1 cp 2 cp 3 are there they need to be unique okay they can't be cp 1 and cp 1 two hardware core processors which are having the same id it's a cause of failure okay that is a bad design and it can't be done now i will there are some core processor id which are reserved okay one is a debug communication channel processor i will talk about that when we uh, touch upon the debug module of arm so there is debug controller and then reserved one is 13 to 8 that means arm has you know reserved this numbers so only these two are, these are available for users that means what if you are a hardware designer and you are building a core processor you can use that only 7 to 4 if suppose you are using with the arm 7 okay i am not talking about <coughs> the later processor family processor we are only concerned about arm 7 in this course so we are talking about what are the register core processor ids supported by arm 7 there are 16 core processor ids and then out of which 13 and 8 are reserved and these are all reserved special purpose and uh, this is also reserved so you are only having only this 4 5 6 7 only which you can uh, develop your own processor now you may wonder where the floating point core processor is it is actually inside this 10 and 11 are used for that we will talk about that later okay so this is debug and this is system control there is another core processor which is called system control we will uh, i'll touch upon that you know later some point in time okay so these are different ids which are reserved for different purposes that's all so this will be mentioned along with the instruction okay i will talk about the instruction format in the next session so you will understand that so pipeline following i talked about this so uh, for a completeness sake i have put it in the slide every core processor in the system okay, must contain a pipeline follower to track the instructions in the arm processor pipeline so okay core processor connect to the configured arm data bus as well as this signal this you know already it is essential that two pipelines remain in step but that means what the co processor pipeline and arm pipeline they should be in 
step in step means they should be in synchronization because when a particular instruction moves from one more one stage to the other stage in the arm pipeline same transition happens in the coprocessor pipeline also not only in one coprocessor if n number of coprocessors are there, all of them will will transition the instruction will transition to next stage so you may wonder how is it done because m clock is common anyway right all of them are connected to m clock so and then they are also having n opc and other signals which are seen by both arm as well as the coprocessor so they can be in sync with the each other and a flushing and refilling of arm pipeline when will it happen suppose arm is executing a branch with a link or branch instruction what happens to the pipeline it gets flushed but what happens to the coprocessor pipeline they also get flushed okay so it is like they mimic what arm does all the coprocessor are dancing to the tunes of arm so whatever this guy arm does the coprocessor also will do because then only they can be in sync in terms of pipeline there are no coprocessor instruction in the thumb instruction set i told you this so coprocessor must monitor the state of t bit because t bit will be low when it is in thumb state that means during thumb state coprocessor will just ignore what is happening on the bus it will only monitor the t bit and then it can just sleep it doesn't have to do anything because it doesn't have to carry the thumb instruction inside the pipeline at all because anyway it's not going it's not going to encounter any coprocessor instruction along with thumb instruction right because thumb instruction means 16 bit instruction there cannot be one odd man out 32 bit instruction between that so it's very safe for the coprocessor to just sleep when there is a thumb thumb mode in thumb mode okay so the coprocessor decodes the instruction currently in decode stage if pipeline to of its pipeline to check whether it belongs to it if the coprocessor number matches with that own id it will generate the required signal if the instruction currently in decode stage is a relevant coprocessor instruction suppose okay coprocessor is just looking at the instruction and then it sees that a coprocessor this is a coprocessor pipeline and it is in the decode stage this pipeline i the coprocessor id matches with its own id okay this is cp1 and the instruction also id is 1 now what does it do the coprocessor attempts to execute the instruction it will start executing the instruction okay so you may wonder why is it starting the execution because typically coprocessor instructions are going to take more time and most of the instructions are internal to its own registers right so it knows that the id matches okay and it belongs to it and it is not busy okay so it will move that instruction maybe along you know it will move only when the arm moves to the execute stage but it will start executing it little ahead okay They're just to keep uh, save some few cycles okay it may execute it the instruction ahead but wait a minute let me erase this the coprocessor handshakes with the arm core using the cpa and cpb it will inform the arm core saying that hey i am taking this instruction okay cpa cpb both will be zero okay that means what it is taking the exact instruction but please remember the n cpa instruction that signal from arm this is arm and this is coprocessor here okay that has not come ncp has not come because arm may be busy with its own instruction okay but let me explain this little bit hope you will understand it see this is coprocessor instruction is there in the arm core and same coprocessor instruction is there in the coprocessor also okay it is in decode stage but it starts executing coprocessor has identified that this is this instruction belongs to me and i am not busy now so i can start executing it but it will not write the result into the register file okay anything suppose it is computing some addition or something until it gets a ncpa signal from the ncpa signal okay from the arm core why because there is a possibility that there is a branch which has happened and this was never executed by to be executed at all in that case even arm the coprocessor also should not execute it or there is a possibility that condition code has failed that eq condition or some other condition code has failed then also that instruction should not be executed so but i said that the coprocessor starts executing it but if it doesn't write the result into the register file then it is as good as not executing right it might have done some job but it may ignore it whatever it has done in between it will drop everything and then it will start fresh 
So the value which is the status what is maintained by the registers in the uh, take an example it is a floating point worker it is not affected by this inspection because ARM decided that this inspection should not be executed. So I hope this is clear to you. So Copa the handshakes with the it informs the ARM code that I am taking it ok as soon as it decodes it but it does not have to wait for NCPA to be low but it must not commit the result until this becomes low it should not commit the result ok good. So same thing I think I have explained it already so this quiz does not have anything but I want you to take a 2 minute break to look at this questions and options and then see which are the options are correct there may be multiple options but I am just giving you uh, no, try to look at it and then come back. Welcome back. If all the options look correct to you, there is something wrong, ok. Only the C option is right. That means condition codes might have failed, so the copy instruction should not be executed. I am saying branch also on another option, but are these in our options are valid? Let me go one by one. The core process instruction being executed may not be valid. See, a core processor has already started the instruction, means the ID was matching, that is why it has started executing. Then this is no longer true, right? It cannot be that ins the instruction cannot be invalid instruction because some core processor has picked it up, that is why it, it is going ahead with the execution, but it is waiting for NCPI to become low to commit the result. That means this is not correct. Then, well, is it correct? ARM might have decided to take undefined instruction exception for the instruction execution and co-processor. This is also not true. Why? The processor, once a co-processor has taken up the instruction, it will say that CPA and CPB. It will make it. See, it is executing it ahead, but it would have made this both zero. That means what? It says that I am taking this instruction. I have a you no know, this is valid instruction ID so I am taking it step somebody has told then after hearing from the co-processor that somebody is ready to execute it the ARM core cannot decide to you know take an exception that is not correct ok only when no co-processor is ready to execute the instruction it should take the exception otherwise this is not a valid option ok can this be a valid option some other co-processor might have also responded to the same instruction by driving CPA CP below is it true? I told you that CPIDs are unique. If another co-processor is also driving the signal, even ARM may not even know that because it's an AND gate. Okay, I am sorry about the AND. Okay, it's an AND gate. If two three co-processor are driving it as zero CPA and CPB, it will not even know. So, so and and is that possible? It should not be. In a system, you cannot have a co-processor with the same ID. So. That is why only this is correct answer. Okay. So execution of the co-processor instruction. Co-processor instructions progress down the ARM core. A co-processor instruction is executed if the following are true. That means co-processor instruction has reached the execute state, and then ARM processor cannot execute the instruction because it's the co-processor instruction, and it is a part of the undefined part of the instruction set, and the instruction has passed the conditional execution test. And CPI is low, and CPA, CPB is or somebody has accepted this, and then the co-processor can commit the instruction to execution. Okay, that's all. I hope the whole thing is clear to you guys. So we have not told so far what are those co-processor instructions. Okay, I only said some co-processor instruction, maybe F pad and F, uh, you know, some floating point. I took uh, an example. We will see what are the instructions supported and then what all can be done using those instructions in the next section. But now I hope you understood that how ARM is reading the instruction and then handing it over to co processor and how that co processor execute them. Okay, if you have understood this and how they communicate with each other, then I think we have done the job of today's in the today's class. Okay. So happy talking to you. Thank you very much for your attention, see you in the next class, have a nice day, bye bye.